Welcome to the Lauren <laughs> finale roundtable on sexual assault. I'm Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks, and we're going to have a great and very important discussion today about rape and military within, I'm sorry, rape and sexual assault within the military. And we're going to do so in a very unique way by talking about this excellent series on wigs called Lauren, which follows the story of a woman who is brutally raped within the military while she's in Afghanistan. Now, Sexual assault and rape continues to haunt the military, just to give you guys some statistics that are mind-blowing. In 2012 alone, there were 26,300 sexual assaults within our military, and that's according to the Department of Defense Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office. Now, here to talk to us about Lauren and also about sexual assault within the military, we have two very talented people here. Troyan Belisario plays the lead character on Lauren, and also John Avnet is the director of Lauren Season 2 and also the co-founder of WIGS. Now, to give you guys a very quick synopsis, Lauren is a amazing, courageous woman who is in the military, and when she least expects it, uh, she is brutally raped by three of her, uh, you know, peers in Afghanistan. It's a very difficult story to watch, but it's also an important one to really cover, and uh, she battles with whether or not she should leak a tape that shows her brutal rape. Uh, now, we have a short clip for you guys so you can see what the series is all about, and then we'll discuss. I cannot put my men and women at risk alongside someone who cannot put their unit first. Maybe I've been wrong. All these years believing in the army. But I don't think so. I believe you're gonna change your mind. Maybe in a day, maybe in a week, maybe even in a goddamn year. Ma'am, you are gonna change your mind. Because you're army to the bone, like I am. And we both know that when we love something, we should fight for it as it should be. Not just the way it is. Now, even though this particular series is fiction, it's based on something that is very real and very important, something that we do need to discuss. And we actually want to have you guys participate in this discussion. You could do so by using the hashtag I did write on Twitter, and we'll answer some of your questions and read some of your comments. Now, let's have a discussion about Lauren, two incredible seasons. And John, I want to start off with you because both seasons were very different. I mean, you see the continuation of the storyline, but the end of the first season, we hear this phrase that makes people kind of jump in their seat. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, embrace the suck, which is what Major Stone tells Lauren when she explains to her what happened during that brutal rape. But then in the second season, we see a little glimmer of hope for Lauren. Now, why did you make that decision? Well, first of all, the piece was written by Jay Roden. I did the uh wrote on uh, two episodes, so it was Jay's writing and I worked with Jay on it and it was his vision. Uh, I think the first season was sort of like, this is the way it is. And I think the second season was uh, Lauren exploring the possibilities as she's experiencing what I refer to as the second rape. Because after you know this horrible attack, she has to go through all the things that almost every woman and man in reporting has to live with. And uh, so it's a very difficult, and it's a very dramatic uh, kind of situation. Uh, and, and that was what we were interested in. And uh, you know, it also sort of in a certain way times out with where I think the military is. Because at this point in time, the President of the United States has said this has to be dealt with. When we finished uh, Lauren 1, uh, the uh, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta was saying, we're going to deal with it. Well, that was a year ago, all right? This is a very thorny issue, but it has now reached, I believe, a critical mass where appropriate institutions uh, and structures are going to be put in where there's some form of civilian review. It just can't continue like this. Uh, so we end the second season, as you know, with the words, justice will be done. Now, there's no question in my mind that the intention of General Prince is that justice will be done. Uh, the question is, will it? Right? And if there is a season three, and there may be, uh, you know, we will explore that. And I think we'll probably stay uh, pretty much up to speed on what the events are you know, in the legislative world. Uh, so that's the facts. The emotional part of this is, is Troyan's journey as uh, the character of Lauren. 
And, uh, you know, I have to say how much I admire what Troyan has done and was willing to do as an actress and as a woman you know, to portray this and to put herself through uh, all these very, very emotional situations. Now, let me just say, I mean, I, I certainly hope that you do have a season three. As someone who watched the series, I could say that it was probably one of the best series on such an important topic because for the longest time, people didn't talk about rape in the military. I mean, men get raped in the military. You never hear about that. Women get sexually assaulted. They report it, and they experience the exact same thing uh, that Troyne's character experienced. I mean, Lauren was basically brushed under the rug in a lot of ways. And, right. you know, I, I actually want to ask you, Troy, and how you emotionally prepared yourself uh, for this. And, of course, this is a question that was also asked uh, to you by Carabella06 on Twitter. What did you do to prepare emotionally? Um, I think it, it, was a lot of, it was a lot of reading. Uh, mm -hmm. I watched a lot of documentaries. There are, in, there are amazing documentaries on uh, not only sexual assault in the military, but a female experience in serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, such as Lioness or The Invisible War. Mm -hmm. um, there's an incredible book called The Lonely Soldier, which is just brilliant testimonies of women who've been serving and what their experience is. So it was a lot of just reading and trying to absorb the different experiences you can have as a woman in the military. And then, um, and then it was simply just kind of reacting to the world that, that John and Jay and the other incredible cast members created. You know, reacting to Jennifer as, as Joe Stone, you, you kind of understand who Lauren is by what she has to come up against. And, you know, when, when Bradley Whitford comes in as, as Milgram, you know, is he with her or is he against her? It's this kind of whole world that she has to navigate. And that was kind of the, the same thing that I was experiencing as an actress. It was, who can I put my f trust and faith in, in this world? I think the strongest part of the series is the complexity of the characters because, you know, they seem pretty simple in season one, but in season two, you get a better sense of Major Stone and what she went through in the past. And, you know, what do you think uh, the audience takes away from all the different perspectives that you see in the show? Not only from Lauren, but also Major Stone, um, from uh, the psychiatrist, Sergeant uh, Milgram. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, you know, so many incredible uh, perspectives. What do you think the audience takes away from it? Well, I think it's it's kind of a really wonderful setup for what do we do about this issue? You know, are we a, are you a Lauren? Do you believe that if you love an institution, it should be as it as, as, the way that you know it can be, not just the way that it is? Are you uh, Joe Stone, which is you know just be strong and push on? That's the way that the army's always done it, or Milgram, which is get these kids out of this situation? You know, it's it's very interesting. We also have this wonderful actor, Ramon Cruz, yeah. who, who played Lauren's uh, assailant, but also before the attack, he's Lauren's friend because they have a history together. And there's one point where he approaches her and opens up to her about the trauma that he's experienced and how he doesn't know what to do. And she basically says, let the army help you. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, th this is your family. Let it take care of you. And he betrays her in a very deep way, but, but they're also that's what's so awful about it. They're also brother and sister in arms. So, but it's, al but it's also, I mean, I think part of what Troy is saying and, uh, is that there's a complexity mm -hmm. to the fabric. Now, this is a fictional group of characters, but Jay's research was extensive, and it was about many of the incidents that have happened. But you get to see the complexity of this world. And instead of just saying, well, everybody's bad, you know, this is a character, Martinez, and Raymond Cruz is a wonderful actor who you know, is very, very much under siege himself. Yeah. The character of, of, of that Bradley Whitford plays uh, is, you know, a guy who's gone through a lot, seen a lot, and he's really disgusted with his inability to do more. I think you feel that, you know, even with, uh, you know, uh, Kendra's character, Sarah yeah. Jones, wonderful, wonderful actress from another one of our series, who has to deal with this thing and has to restrain her at a certain moment so that the evidence is preserved, so that if justice will be served, it'll be served. And then when Michael T. Williamson comes in at the end, you know, he's got such presence and he's such a wonderful actor, you know, will justice be served? I mean, we want to believe, and certainly her character wants to believe that it will be served, but will it? Can it? You know, and again, this isn't a piece about people who don't like the military. Yeah. This is a character she plays that would embrace the suck under almost any circumstance. 
you know, because she does believe. And when she's saying that, you know, wonderful clip there, those words, I think, are very precise. Yeah, and she comes from a military family. I mean, oh, she yeah. has this, you know, history with the military, and she believes so strongly in it. And I think a lot of women in the military feel the exact same way. So they are faced with this conundrum, and they don't know how to handle it. Now, I want to go to another question uh, from Twitter. It's from Dell30. And uh, the question is, uh, Troy, how would you describe what Lauren and Stone think about each other? Um, that, I mean, uh, it's very interesting because we just got off of the topic of complicated and complex characters, and these are two very, very complex women. And I think what they, uh, the ultimate baseline is that I believe that they have so much respect for each other. And I think that that's truly where the, their love uh, between their characters lies, but there's also the fact that there's a lot of responsibility with that respect, and I think that Joe Stone believes that Lauren will understand her decision and and her predicament and um, do you feel that uh, she does I mean do you feel that Lauren understands the decision that's made I think that Lauren understands where where it came from I think that she's disappointed and I think that in the end there's a, there is a rift between them you know that you hear over the phone conversation um, you know when, when Lauren leaves in that last conversation that we just reviewed in the tent she basically says I know what you are, and I know that you're going to come out on my side of things. I know that you're going to change your mind because you're army to the bone like me. And then when you see that they have this last phone conversation where they are essentially on, on opposite sides getting ready to tug at each other, I think that uh, it, it presents a whole new set of complexities for these Remember, your character doesn't even know the details of, you know, of her past, of Stone's past. Yeah. And so there's even more irony to this, that this is a woman who believes in the military you know, code, mm -hmm. and yet she's suffered it, and, uh, and yet she's going to do what she believes is right, which is, again, you know, part of what's the conflict here. And, and, and I think it would be remiss on our part not to mention Jennifer Beals, who yes. is in many ways the godmother of this, because she's such a fearless, wonderful person and such a strong believer and took a character that's so different than perhaps who she is, but Jennifer in many ways embodies you know, what we wanted to do here. Yeah. And I think the relationship between Jennifer and Troyan, uh, off camera as well as on camera, was a very, very rich and wonderful one. Uh, Her acting is just incredible. And, you know, as you're watching it, you just. You can't decide whether you're in favor of her or you're against her. I mean, you right. understand her past, and that's what I love about the show. It's so complex. There are no good guys or bad well, guys. Well, Jennifer, you, you Jennifer know. embraced the suck. She embraced mm -hmm. the character. She, did. she went there. But it was that the right decision? And I think that's what the audience is well, asking. Well, I'm saying as an actress, yeah. she embraced the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the complexities you're talking about, you know, it's not every actress who would want to say, "I'm, I'm going to play someone who people might think, well, that's a bad woman." You know, she's a very complex woman and Definitely. she's doing her job, you know, mm -hmm. and she's showing how competent she is and she's putting aside her emotions, but at a great price to her. And when she says that line to Brad Whitford, because you don't want her to become like me, you go, ooh, yeah. that's pretty tough. Definitely. <laughs> well, I want to go to another Twitter question. Uh, Stormy Grace asks, if you were in Lauren's position, would you have leaked the video? Troy, and what do you think? Um, I... It's it's very funny. I don't know if I could answer that because I've thought about it a lot, but from Lauren's perspective, and I believe that you know, John, as John said earlier, you have the actual event of the rape, you have the second rape, which is all of the tests that you have to go through in you know the hospital to preserve evidence. You have to tell your story over and over again. You have to hear people dismiss your story, and it's something that you have to relive over and over and over again. And at what point is it just? too much to kind of move forward with, you know, and, and I don't know if leaking a video is is something that I would be immediately ready to do, to, to expose, you know, I would want to expose it, but I don't know if I would be ready. Well, also like what your character goes through when you have, ta you know, turn the tables on Martinez. I mean, do you mm -hmm. want to, I mean, most, many people certainly would feel they would want to gut him like a pig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, oh, definitely. It's, it's righteous on every basic level. At the same time, do you do that? That was, that was a moment for me where, as Troyan, I was like, I, because I don't have a daughter, that was right. the one difference between Lauren and I. I was like, remember, 
remember your daughter, remember your daughter, because that was, that, that's definitely a decision I don't know if I can make yeah. to save him. I know. All right, well, now let's go to Nancy Parrish. She's the pre uh, president of Protect Our Defenders. She's doing great work to raise awareness about the situation that's happening within our military right now. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. Nancy, can you hear us? I can't hear you. All right, we're having some tech difficulty. Um, let me know when you can hear the sound us. Sound does not seem to be working. Oh, no. All right, so can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, Nancy. Uh, let us know when you oh, can hear us. I can hear you now. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, I actually want to start off by asking you a little more about your nonprofit organization. What are you guys doing specifically to raise awareness about this issue? Well, we're we were created. Protect Our Defenders was created almost uh, two and a half years ago as a place for the survivor community to come together to build community to help one another and to bring attention and fight for fundamental reform. And we've, in many respects, become the intersection between the survivor community and the media. And we, uh, victims come to us, we investigate their cases. We often put a number of cases together when we find them at the same um, military installations and we inform the media and we protect the victims uh, through that process. And so it's um, what we saw in the series of Lauren is exactly what we see happen every day. How do you feel that series like Lauren um, help raise awareness about the issue? Obviously, uh, it's a, a, a very well done series, but how can we actually r bring more attention to it so people can watch it, people can understand what the reality is? Because honestly, it's one thing to hear reports or watch some anchor talk about assault in the military. It's another thing to visualize it with a series like Lauren. That's right. I mean, I think the series brought um, a human dimension to the crisis, uh, as um, was so clearly pointed, poignantly pointed out. And it was very hard for me to watch, and it was very hard for a number of survivors to watch. And in fact, we held a number of house parties around the country um, to watch these, um, uh, the watch the series. And of uh, victims, you know, the the. Pentagon's own numbers and our own experience with victims highlight a worsening epidemic. The alarming rise in the number of assaults demonstrate the crisis is getting worse, more people are being assaulted, uh, the large number of anonymous and restricted reports show a lack of faith in the military justice, uh, the number of sexual assaults incidents rose 34.5% from 2011 to 2012. Why? Um, what the series showed of those few who do report, 66% of them state they were retaliated against professionally, um, administratively, and socially. They were abandoned by their military family. They were kicked out under false pretenses. It's literally the destruction of a human being. You know, just recently, uh, you know, there's a task force within the military that's supposed to focus on preventing rape and assault. And two different people from that task force are uh, undergoing investigation for raping and assaulting themselves. One person has been charged, another is being investigated. So part of the reform has to do with taking, you know, uh, the reviews and the investigations out of the military and having like an unbiased group really taking a look at that. Is your group doing anything to really push that type of legislation? Legislation. Uh, absolutely. And first, let me say um, it's now a third individual who's been charged from Fort Campbell, who is also okay. in charge with the sexual assault um, prevention program at Fort Campbell, um, has been uh, uh, charged by the military of a sexual assault. So it, it but this comes at no surprise because the patience and deference our elected leaders have shown the military to solve this crisis has come at really great sacrifice to our service men, men and women. And it's time for the president and Congress and military leadership to not only incentivize those who are doing the right thing, but to hold those accountable who are countenancing sexual assault by protecting def uh, um, these offenders. And as you saw with Lieutenant General Franklin, who overturned the sexual assault conviction of Lieutenant Colonel Wilkerson at the Aviano Air Force Base, the victim, Kim, came to us. Uh, we protected her while she had a chance to tell her family, her college-aged son, that she had been assaulted. We, we brought her to Congress. We had her meet with a number of individually, privately, with senators and congresspersons to um, 
to help demonstrate a human face to this. And the legislation now um, is moving forward, but slowly. And we need the country's help. We need them to join our movement. Uh, Congresswoman Jackie Speer in the House has introduced the STOP Act. Senator Gillibrand and Boxer and others have introduced um, another piece of legislation in the Senate. They, they vary, and it's our hope that they will get together. And they both, though, do some very important things. They take prosecution out of the chain of command. Uh, the STOP Act goes a little further. It takes the entire reporting system out of the chain and puts it under more civilian control under the Secretary of Defense. Um, Senator Gillibrand's legislation and others keeps it inside the professional structure in the Chiefs of Staff, but it still removes it outside the unit chain of command, which is critical. Um, there won't be justice for these cases until the conflicted and biased chain of command is removed from their authority to override these cases, to stop an investigation, to prevent a victim from reporting, um, or, or to set a conviction aside if they don't like the outcome. It's justice in the hands of one individual is not justice. All right, uh, I have one final question that I want to read from Twitter. It's from uh, Beauty Queen Troy, and it says, what can people at home do to help stop the issue of sexual assaults in the military? And I think that's a great question. Uh, John, I know that there are these viewing parties where people can watch Lauren, and it, as I said, it could really help visualize what's happening within the military. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Nancy for you know, her service and, uh, uh, and, and the people at SWAN as well, uh, because this is obviously, uh, you know, extremely uh, serious and it's an egregious, egregious uh, situation. Uh, and we feel that our role here is to tell stories and to embody uh, the, uh, the, the, the narratives in a way that's very, very truthful and very emotive. And it is difficult from, for the most obvious reasons, for the actual survivors uh, to experience this. Uh, and it's a little bit sometimes of a quandary when you have the opportunity to do these things, which we feel very fortunate because we're hopefully an element that will help make the situation seem very real and, and allow for a kind of legislative result. Uh, I have had in the past uh, one or two instances where I've been able to do something like this with some amazing results. Uh, many years ago, I did a film called The Burning Bed about domestic violence. And it was a very, very successful film. Farrah Fawcett starred in it. And uh, because of that, the domestic violence issue, one, came out of the closet, and two, uh, the battered woman syndrome became part of the canon of law. And the way police were trained to uh, approach a domestic dispute changed in a very, very significant way. So I say that as a way of saying there's no reason why here, with what I believe is a critical mass, that a similar kind of result can't be achieved with the efforts of Nancy and others, and particularly of the members of the public, who, if they are as outraged as I believe they should be, they need to speak to their congressmen and their senators. And that will have an impact. It will allow this bureaucratic situation to be changed, as Nancy was saying, so there's a civilian oversight, so that the same form of justice we consider necessary to the public is available to those who serve in the military. Uh, so uh, we, we're very, very pleased to be able to do this. Sometimes it's hard. I, I can see Troy and Wincing, and I know Jennifer has this credible sensitivity to portraying these things and exposing people who've been through it to additional hurt, but our purpose is very simple and very clear. We want something done, and these are the people, Nancy and company, who are actually trying to make this change happen. Absolutely. Special thanks to Nancy Parrish for joining us for this conversation. And also, if you do want to take action, there are specific things that you can do. Uh, you can go to house.gov slash representative slash find and support legislation that would change what's happening in the military right now with rape and sexual assault. Uh, you can also uh, contact WIGS and protect our defenders. They are working with causes.com to provide DVDs to people who want to watch Lauren at home and have these viewing parties. Um, and also, you can watch uh, Lauren seasons one and two on youtube.com slash wigs. Um, and, you know, thank you so much for joining us, guys. I mean, this is a really important conversation, and I, you are raising awareness with this incredible series. Um, Troy and Belisario, uh, we do have a few last tweets that we're going to get to in a second. Uh, as soon as I know what the tweets are, <laughs> they're not up yet. Um, actually, here they are. So Julia uh, at Sleeping in the Garden wants the greatest, what's the greatest difficulty that Lauren's 
uh, living into all the problems. Uh, what is the big <laughs> question? Yeah, big Great question. question. Um, what was the greatest difficulty that Lauren is living? The greatest difficulty for Lauren, I think, is is just is finding the path, finding the path to justice, which I mm -hmm. think is what we're trying to raise awareness of is what is the path for all of these women and men that are undergoing these you know th these these traumatic events and they th the army is their lives like yeah. like Lauren it, it it is the path that they're on so they don't necessarily want to step off they don't want to burn that bridge but they but they deserve justice they deserve to be heard so i think that that is the greatest problem for Lauren it's it's trying to seek justice and do you feel frustration at all uh, as you're playing these characters? I mean, uh, like, obviously immense, you could, Immense yeah. frustration. Even just listening to, you know, the, the retelling of how many people are now being, uh, and haven't been convicted, but are now being tried for, you know, sexual assault, when these are the people that we're supposed to be able to go to, um, to report any incidents. It's, it's enraging to me, um, and it's, and, you know, I, I, I hesitate to, to kind of go into like the emotions that I feel simply because I'm, I'm not a part of the military and I, and I have not experienced those events for myself, but as somebody who has experienced them by proxy or has heard stories uh, firsthand, it is something that I, I so greatly hope is addressed and has changed very, very soon. Absolutely. John, a question to you from Flawless Truly. How would you describe Lauren's family, especially the relationship she has with her brother? Well, they're military. I mean, this is a military family, and, uh, you know, they believe in the military, and, uh, and they don't countenance weakness. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is what Jay created. And, and by the way, Jay played her brother, Jay Roden, <laughs> the writer, uh, who was also an actor. Uh, and so he was actually playing the part that he had written there. And, but they want justice. They want justice. Now, it's different between Lauren and her mother, and perhaps Joanne can talk to that better than me. Uh, but, uh, you know, they are a military family. And, and you know, one of the histories that uh, is becoming more prevalent as, as science and medicine uh, start to make some progress is, you know, what used to be called shell shock, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as now, you know, post-traumatic syndrome. Uh, if you think back to, you know, the greatest generation, those of World War II, you know, the way they handled it was two things. They didn't talk about it. They just didn't talk about it. And as I was talking to you before we started taping, it was sort of like Kurtz and uh, Conrad's Heart of Darkness, you know, the horror of the horror. What are you going to say? You know, they spent time with those who had experienced the same thing. And there were, in their silence was the conversation. And it's in many ways similar to Holocaust survivors. Uh, uh, they really had a hard time talking about it because what do you say? Yeah. You know, what do you say? So I think that's the world she comes back to and as Troyan was saying, and as always as eloquently as she does, you know, what is her life if her life is taken away from her? It's one thing to have this insult, this assault, this rape. You know, now she's being taken out of this world, which is who she is, who she always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. That's another tertiary it's her result. legacy. Yeah, you know, of, 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 of what's happened, you know, whereas Martinez, who knows what will happen to him? Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen to, you know, the general's son? Well, uh, Troyan gets another question from French Liar Twenty One. Uh, do you have a message for victims who are scared to talk about rape? Uh, th this this question is always very difficult to answer, simply because you you, you know I, I I don't know what your experience was if you've experienced sexual assault to what degree, um, or what you feel you're ready to do in any given moment. But it is it is massively important for you to come forward and speak and speak out and and seek repercussions for those who've wronged you because sitting in silence although I know sometimes it might be maybe the I wouldn't even say easier thing but the less painful thing mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't even know if that's true it it uh, it's it's something that isn't moving the conversation forward the conversation has to be had and uh, so I would just encourage everybody to to speak to speak to whomever they can and speak out and speak loud and, uh, and I, I pray that you are listened to with a full heart. Definitely. I, you know, in the, in the very last episode, we don't know who leaked that tape. And that's why I'm really hoping that there is a season three and there's a continuation <laughs> of the storyline because it's a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, and John, you know, did you purposely make that decision? Because when you really step back and you reflect on that very last scene, you realize that both women have something to gain out of leaking that tape. 
Yeah, no, that was a very conscious decision. Uh, anytime you're writing or working with Jay in, in the writing or the, st the storytelling, you know, you're always wondering. Uh, one of the great things in this medium is you get a lot of feedback, and uh, it's been mm -hmm. very, very uh, incredibly gratifying because it's been very positive. Uh, but what we wanted was to keep it real, okay? Even if the best person in the world wanted to do the best thing, can he or she do that? Even if someone who's military to the bone, you know, who wouldn't go against the chain of command, would she leak it? You know, if she didn't leak it, who did? You know, what does this mean for Joe Stone, who is certainly within the book? You know, she follows the code, all right? But does it create an opportunity for her? Uh, what does it mean for Milgram, you know, who sat and watched these kids, you know, you know, with just incredible suffering, you know, who is someone who obviously has a heart, but he's also got a job there. And if he doesn't do it, who will do it? So what we wanted is, a, as you said, is a very thick porridge, you know, where you answer one question and you create a myriad of other questions. and, and uh, Hopefully we'll get a chance to, uh, to explore them, and I'm sure they'll be provocative again because this is very, a very real situation. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, it's real. And fortunately, we get to be, have the honor of carrying the message in a certain way and, and also the responsibility to do it, hopefully as eloquently as we can. Avery uh, Troyan says, do you want Lauren to go back to the military? Which I think is an excellent question. <laughs> Troyan, what do you think? Um, I think it's uh, that's a that's a wonderful question. I I don't I, I would say I wouldn't want her to go back until a very certain set of circumstances were explored. You know, I, w I would want her to be heard. I would want uh, there to be a trial, and I would want there to be a, a sort of you know I would want Martinez and the other assailants to answer to what they did. Um, until then, I don't. I don't know if I don't agree with Milgram. Why, you know, if, is this is this place the safest place for her if she's going to continue to undergo assaults? I mean, that's what's truly horrific about the, these women and these men who don't get their stories heard or don't get justice served is that they go right back into serving next to their assailants. And if you think that that rep events aren't going to be repeated or they're not going to be, you know, harassed again. I, I frankly think that you're, you know, you, you have rose-colored glasses on. It's, it's going to be an ongoing problem because if you do something and get away with it once, what's to stop you from doing it again? I know. And, you know, the incredible thing is, you know, as you watch that series, you realize that it's not just about rape and sexual assault. There are so many different issues at play. Uh, you have the problem of mental health among our soldiers. You have the problem of military vets, you know, leaving the military and trying to adjust to civilian life. I mean, there are so many cases of post-traumatic stress disorder, and of mm. course you touch on that a little bit with Martinez. And the system that they have to go through to yeah. seek help once they're outside. I mean, the, the system that we've set up for Army vets is, is truly complicated, and it's not working at the moment. It's completely and, backed up. Exactly. And the diagnosis that you know, she's given, you know, it's fairly broad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. And you know, it's not that it means nothing, but is it being applied punitively, mm -hmm. or is it being applied clinically, or is it being applied protectively. I mean, these yeah. are the nuances, you know, of the storytelling mm -hmm. that you do want to find out the answer. Uh, and, you know, from, you know, my what, position as the filmmaker, you know, I do believe Lauren is military to the bone. I believe she, you know, leaving that is like leaving a part of herself there. And, uh, you know, that certainly she would want that. But as Troyan says, yeah, there are probably some conditions there. I don't think she would want to walk back into yeah. the same situation any more than any of the people who are actual victims of this. And when you watch The Invisible War and you see how strongly they love the military, yeah. what their commitment was, they're serving for us. We are the recipients of their work. We are the recipients of their bravery. bravery. We are the recipients of their sacrifice. You know what I mean? And that's what brought them there. You know what I mean? And these events are happening within the walls of their bases. Mm -hmm. This is not being shot at by an enemy. Mm -hmm. These are our, it's their brothers and sisters. It's happening American training grounds. Well, you know? yeah. I mean, and by the way, tailhook, you know. I mean, Jane Harmon was working on this as a representative. You know, look at how many things up in Colorado. I, I think it was the early 2000s. You know, this has been going on, and it's been visible. It's not been invisible. And nothing of consequence has really happened. And when you get the numbers, I would be very dubious as to how accurate they are Absolutely. in terms of being the number of women or men who do not tell.
yeah. who live with it and who often internalize it and live with shame as if they had something to do with it. There's a huge disparity between the number of uh, sexual assaults and rapes that are reported versus those that are that go exactly. unreported, and that's a huge problem. And, you know, there has been this huge question about whether or not women should fight on the front lines, even if they have the physical ability to do so. And I feel like this constant criticism of women not being strong enough in the military plays into why so many women don't want to come forward with the sexual yeah. assault and the rape. But of course, that's just my speculation. There's no study on well, that. No, one of the most incredible moments of filming this series was the day that we shot the, um, the hospital scene. It was a very, very trying day. John was wonderful with me, but it was, it was a long day from morning till night. We shot that scene, often running the full thing you know, th through every take. And um, and I finally, he said, it, we got everything. And I kind of went to my car and I was exhausted and I turned on the radio. And that was the day we were reporting it on NPR that the, um, the combat exclusion policy had been lifted. Yeah. And it was, I, I know from speaking with so many women in SWAN, that is a huge victory uh, for, for equalization, for respect, to be seen by your fellow male soldier as just as, as valuable yeah. as another male soldier. And I think that it's, it's those kind of changes, hopefully, that will begin a domino effect in changing the way women are viewed in the military, that they're not weak or they're not, you know, kind of things that we need to allow in to service the modern times. These are brave and fierce soldiers. Absolutely. Uh, one last Twitter question, and it's from Benzo Infinity, uh, and it's to Troyan. Has Lauren changed you personally? If yes, how? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's opened up a whole world in front of my eyes. My my father was in the military, but uh, he stopped serving long before I was born. So it was always kind of something that I saw pictures of and heard stories of. And and until Lauren came into my life, and I was kind of dropped into this whole world where I began to learn about ranks of officers and how to salute properly and 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 the, the stories that these a lot of them are kids tell yeah. you know to that they have to go through to serve like as John was saying to serve us we are reaping the benefits of their bravery and their sacrifice and and for me it opened up a whole new world of responsibility that I wanted to take on to help to help them to get justice served to support them to show love to them and to show that they're not alone and that you don't have to be in the military to care and want to see this change. Troy and Belisario, thank you so much for this discussion and your thank incredible you. performance in Lauren. It thank truly you. was inspiring. And John Avnet, I mean, incredible work. Thank you so much. You. Uh, you guys can definitely check this out on youtube.com slash wigs. Just search for Lauren. And while you're at it, might as well watch all the other series because they're just as good. <laughs> uh, and I am Anna Casper, and you guys can check me out on The Young Turks at youtube.com slash The Young Turks. Thank you for participating in this, this discussion. It was an important one to have, and we couldn't do it without you. Have a great day.